Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 33. So this time we are going to take a little bit of a break from development and we're going to focus on a couple of different things. We're going to take a look at our splash screen and get that looking a little bit nicer maybe. Uh, we'll take a look at our main menu. Uh, we're going to add in perhaps a title for our game, a little logo in there. And we'll also look at linking some scenes because I've noticed we do have a couple of problems with our scenes as it stands. So I want to go to the credit scene first off because I believe the way I set this up may uh, link to the wrong scene because if we go into the script which is attached here and the idea of what I noticed with this is the scenes themselves because we've numbered them if we change scenes or move scenes around or uh, I think it may occur as well if we date unity at any point with a project and that's what I've done with this so I can't be too sure if that is the case but at the moment the credit scene when it finishes actually links back to the game over screen so it may be worth checking for you if you followed along exactly as I have because we don't want to watch the credits and then end up at game over that would just that would just be silly so speaking of game over as well what I would like to try and do in this episode but we may split into the next episode is respawn as well because respawning is a vital part of an FPS, if you think about it. So, now we have Visual Studio open, and once it's thought about it and stopped being slow, we're just going to check which scene number three is. So if we go back to Unity, File, and Build Settings, so we can see number three is indeed game over, and we need to go to number four. So, let's change this to number four, and save. So this is all a good time for you to recheck your scenes, check everything is in order, and just check everything is good. So I'm going to go to the splash screen now, which is uh, right here. And let's just check which one this leads to. So if we double click here, open the script, we should be able to see when it loads that it's going to scene four which, yeah, is the right one because scene four is our main menu. So while we're here, let's have a little play with the animation. So for example, we have Jimmy Vegas Game Studios. That's my logo, that's what I am. So let's add some animation to that just to give it a little bit more something about it. So we know that this lasts for five and a half seconds. So let's make an animation which lasts for, mm, I don't know, just a second and we'll see what happens. So let's go to our animations folder and click on animation, let's click on create, and let's call this logo anim. And I think, I think we're gonna set the first keyframe as a completely rotated, or rather 90 degrees on the Y. So let's set our first keyframe over here, uh, rotation right here. Let's have as, yeah, let's have as 90. And then let's change uh, maybe about a second in. So if we go to our 60th frame, hit enter. And let's have by the 60th frame, we are back at zero. And because it lasts five and a half seconds, let's say after uh, four seconds of displaying, it rotates 90 degrees the other way. So it just gives a little bit of animation, a little bit of something extra to this splash screen. So we need to go four seconds ahead of where we are. So that will be uh, 300, I believe. Or should we do it a little bit less? Let's do this as, let's have 250. So at frame 250, we also want this frame to be the same. So what we could do is just quickly press one and rewrite with zero, hit enter. So then by frame, let's say 310, hit enter, we rotate to minus 90. Hit enter, press the record button, and let's save our scene. But before we go any further, what would be wise doing is, hey, well, let's just press play, see how this looks. Hopefully it looks okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, that looks okay so far. Perfect, so what we need to do is change it so it only animates once. And I'm also going to set the rotation of the actual object initially to be 90. So let's find the uh, actual animation. 
it's called I forgot what it is actually. What do we just call it? <laughs> um gosh, I'm having I'm having a senior moment here, guys. I cannot find the animation. I cannot find it. I'm going mad. Logo anim. Uh untick loop time. There we go. Press play and let's check this finally. I'm not a senior, honestly, I'm not, guys. <laughs> Excellent. So let's work with the main menu now. So let's save our scene and let's go to main menu. And as I said, I would like to bring in kind of like a logo for the game. So I'm going to go down to my textures folder here and I'm going to bring in two textures, these two here. And I'm going to decide which one looks best. So I'm going to attach uh, an image. So game object, UI, image, not raw image. And while I do this, I'm going to take both of these textures and change their type to be a sprite. Click on apply. And now I am going to add, let's start with the dark one and let's see how that looks. So drag and drop onto there. Uh, obviously we need to expand it. So let's say height of 200 and width of 400, maybe bigger. 500. Let's align this to the top. And now I'm going to create a material for it, which we can apply and hopefully it will make it look a little bit nicer. So in my material folder, uh, right click, create a material down here, and let's call it logo mat. And I'm going to drag and drop my dark logo onto the albedo, change the shader particles and we'll have additive for now uh, back onto the image and let's apply uh, if I can find it again uh, the logo material onto there and press play so yeah I kind of like how that looks it's not the best but let's play with the color let's add it a bit red slightly and now let's also try with the inverted one. So let's create, in fact, we don't need to create a material. Let's just apply that texture to the original material. So if we go to our logo mat right there, textures and apply. Don't make too much of a difference because of the way it's actually uh, rendering through the shader. So let's try additive soft. We'll stick with what we had. So it's up to you how you want to do it. I brought in the inverted one just in case I wanted to say have it nice and, well, you couldn't see through it. It's completely opaque, but I do kind of like how that is now. That's kind of cool. So let's work with these buttons right here. Now, obviously we're not just gonna have play game and credits. We're gonna have different things here as well. So we may as well future-proof. So let's take our buttons and move them. Let's have them over here on the right. So let's take it. Move it over here, play game there, credits, let's move, let's move it down here. And should we change the font? Let's change the font. So on the text, let's have it as this font here. And same with the credit, let's have a new font there. And let me see. I think I'll have the normal color as completely uh, so the alpha set as zero. So I may do these alpha as zero for all the buttons and see how that looks. So when we hover over them, they should actually change color. So I think the highlighted color, let's have that as black. So let's change it to black. And the same with the credit button. Let's have that as black as well. And I'm going to duplicate the play button, hold control, press D, because I'm going to have this one as, let's have it as load, because obviously we're going to have loading and saving at some point in this series. So it would only be wise and sensible to have that there. So let's have that as load button. Now, obviously, load and play are going to do exactly the same at this present moment in time. And that's where scene linking comes into play, because we're going to need a respawn scene. And that respawn scene can be used as our initial play uh, button function, whereas load would be something different. 
So let's try it one more time. Okay, so I quite like how that is. I might actually move the logo maybe to the bottom. How's that look now? Yeah, that'll do. That's all right. <clears throat> okay, so let's get to work on a respawn scene. So file, new scene. Yes, we do want to save. And we don't need anything to this, just UI, raw image, stretch the raw image in the anchor points, zero everything out so it covers the entire screen, and we'll set it to black. And now file, save scene as, and we'll just call it respawn. We'll just call it respawn. And then in file, uh, build settings, add open scenes. So respawn is going to be number five. So basically, all this scene really needs is just the ability to go straight to scene number, I think it's two, is it? Which is scene number one, which is the main level. So we need this to take you to level one instantly, because that's the idea. It will reset everything that's in level one, because we've exited the scene and not saved anything. So when we go back in, everything will have reset. So we've respawned. So let's go to our scripts folder. And right click, create, C sharp script. And let's call this respawn level. And let's open that up in uh, Visual Studio. And all we need is just void start. And at the top, we need to put using unity engine dot scene management semicolon and in void start scene manager dot load scene and in brackets one semicolon and save so no matter what happens when we attach this script to this scene we will always go to our level so game object create empty and we'll just put respawn script and then just attach respawn onto there and let's save that scene now just to prove this works Let's press play. And even though we've loaded this scene, we actually go to this scene right here. So what that means is that if we go to our main level, and if we go to our actual pause menu, for example, which is down here in our canvas, I'm going to set it as active so we want to work with it. And we already have that respawn button in place, don't we? So what we'll do, is this actual object that contains the pause game script. If we open that up, we need to set an extra um, method down here, which will allow us to respawn. So public void respawn game, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And then all we need to do is just take ourselves to that respawn level. So to do so, we just go scene manager dot load scene and in brackets five semicolon and at the top in the namespace using unity engine dot scene management semicolon and save. And now back into Unity, click on the respawn button. And here we just need to change it. So instead of unpause game, we click on respawn game and then turn the uh, pause menu off right there. Save that scene and let's press play. So let's, um, let's actually do something useful. Let's go here. Let's pick up a gun and let's kill the zombie. Okay, so he's dead. He's gone. So let's respawn. If it does a something. It's not going to let me. Come on, respawn. There we go. So we've respawned, but we can't actually see anything because of the lighting. So let's check what's gone on here. I believe the something has gone wrong so let's check what's happened it may be our fade in screen 
So when we start the scene, does that get turned off? I don't think it should make much of a difference. So let's try respawning again. So respawn. Okay, so we do have a problem here. Let's see if we can figure out what the problem is. Let's go to our canvas and turn off fade screen in. Yes, so it appears fade screen in is a little bit of a problem for us here. So what we could do is, let's see, we need to turn off fade screen in after it has actually faded in. So we need to find our game load object or game load script, which is somewhere here. Let's see, which one did we use, guys? Which one did we use? Uh, that's ammo, that's barrel, that's a creaky door, that's a credit menu, that's enemies, global ammo, gunfire, handgun, health monitor, main menu, pause game. Hmm, uh, I think what we'll do actually is if we go into our respawn script, let's actually declare the uh, fade screen as an object. So public game object and fade screen semicolon and we'll set it as inactive fade screen dot set active false semicolon and save and we just need to declare that in the inspector panel let's check for errors nope that's fine so paused object let's bring in fade screen save and let's press play Okay, so yet again, the fade screen has caused a problem. It's not fading. Why is it not fading? So okay, I think um, one thing to note at this point is, yes, this is the joys of dealing with game development. You will always come across problems constantly. So let's actually turn off our fade screen for now completely. And let's just make sure this respawn does actually work without breaking the game or pausing the game to go into development. Respawn, there we go. So I think what's going on here is we are stuck in this position. So what we're going to need to do now is just make sure we're doing things right. So if we go to our respawn screen, let's save what we have there, press play. And we can do that, that's fine. So if we respawn. Right, yep, I think I know what the problem is. Essentially, we need to unpause the game. I think that's what the, the case is. I think that's what it is, guys. So we need to actually respawn and set everything back. So I think it's here. So we may not need to turn the fade screen off. I think I've just cracked it. Like I say, this is the joys of development. So what we'll need to do to respawn is unpause the game and then respawn. So let's give that a go. Fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed we've got this down now. So I'm going to go back to my main level. I'm going to turn my fade screen back on. Press play. And let's wander over here. In fact, let's get our zombie to come towards us over here. And let's pause. And respawn. And there we go. We've basically reset the entire scene, so we have literally respawned. So even if we go all the way out of here and start having the spiders coming at us, we can pause, respawn, and everything is as it was. So, next episode, we are going to take more look at scenes, and we're going to make uh, a scene that's inside. So we may have a cave or something that we can go into and do all kinds of stuff. So next time is all about some more environment, more scenes, and more fun. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.